Hello, I am Miss Amy, and I am so excited I get to be the next reader of the second book. This book is called The Enormous Egg by Oliver Butterworth. So get your book out, and you guys can read along with me, and we'll see what happens in The Enormous Egg. So let's get started. Chapter 1. So today we are reading Chapter 1. There was your, as you can see, the beginning... My name is Nate Twitchell, but I can't help that. It's a kind of funny name, but I've had it for 12 years, and I'm pretty much used to it by now. I guess a lot of other folks have got used to it, too, after the thing that happened up here in Freedom last summer. That's the name of the town I live in, Freedom, New Hampshire. It's just a little town with a few houses all along one street and a store and a church and not much else. Oh, yes, and a school. I almost forgot that. We're only about three miles from the main state line. But Pop says freedom's just as much as a part of our state as Concord is. And somebody has to live near the state of Maine. My Pop runs a newspaper here in town. It's called the Freedom Sentinel, and it comes out once a week. We mail out a lot of copies to people in Effingham and Center Ossipee and places like that. I guess the paper doesn't make much money, but we have some chickens and a goat and a vegetable garden, and that helps out. But I want to tell you about this thing that happened to us. I don't know where to begin. I guess I better go back to the last spring when Mrs. Parsons began leaving her window open. You see, she sleeps with her bedroom window shut all winter. But when it warms up again in May, she begins leaving her window open at night. Pop always waits for Mrs. Parsons to open that window before he plans his beans. He says it's more dependable than the almanac. Anyway... Her house is next to ours, and her window looks out on our backyard where the chicken coop is. And last spring, she began to complain to Mom that the rooster was waking her up with his crowing. She said we ought to get rid of him. We had a family conference the next morning at breakfast. Mom said we didn't have any right to disturb the neighbors just because we wanted to keep an old rooster. Pop said he thought we might have the right to disturb the neighbors but we better not disturb Mrs. Parsons because she lets us keep our goat in her back lot. Cynthia, she's my sister, said she didn't care what happened to the nasty old bird. That made me kind of mad because we've had that old rooster for six years now and I like him. My uncle Julius bought him over to, brought him over to us from his farm in Potter Place. He's a New Hampshire Red, the rooster I mean. And let's get a wild look in his eye, and he's got a wild look in his eye, and always runs at my sister with his wings flapping whenever he gets a chance. She hates him. Anyways, I said we ought to try some way of keeping the rooster quiet in the early morning, and if it worked, then we could keep him, and Mrs. Parsons could get her sleep, and everything would be all right. And how do you propose to keep a rooster quiet? Pop wanted to know. Crowing at daybreak is a pretty strong habit with roosters. Couldn't we shut him up somewhere at night, I said? We could put him down cellar and it would be dark and he wouldn't know when it was time to crow. Mom never really enjoys having any of the livestock in the house and she didn't take to the idea, even when I promised to clean out his box every morning. But Pop said, why don't we try it for a while and see how it works? After all, he said, we don't want to sentence him without a trial. If we did that sort of thing up here in Freedom, it would be a bad example to the rest of the country. In the end, Mom agreed to give it a try, and I was going to have the job of taking Ezekiel down the cellar every night and letting him out in the morning. We called the rooster Ezekiel after a great uncle of mine. Pop says it's important to keep a name like that in the family. Well, for about a month, I went on carrying Ezekiel down into the cellar every night and carrying him out again in the morning. 
He didn't like it a bit. He used to put up an awful fuss in the evening when I tried to catch him. When I picked him up off the roost, he would squawk and beat his wings in my face. And feathers and dust would blow all around. And the hens would get all roused up and everything. I got kind of tired doing it every day. And sometimes I wondered if it was worth while doing all that just for a rooster. But you know how it is when you're doing something that's your own idea. You can't get, you just can't back down and let people say, I told you so. So I kept at it. And there got to be a lot of feathers scattered around the cellar. Sometimes, about three o'clock in the morning, you could hear old Ezekiel whooping it up down there, but it was pretty muffled, and the rest of the family didn't say anything about it. It was just about the middle of June when this peculiar thing happened. For about a week, I noticed that one of the hens was looking pretty different. She had swelled out quite a bit and was lopsided, and her feathers stuck out all over the way a hen gets when she's too worried to smooth herself down. Pop thought she was just broody and wanted to set, and he told me to keep shooing her off the nest. But I had an idea. It was something more than that. She got so big she could hardly waddle, and I didn't have the heart to push her off the nest once she climbed up to it. So all that week, she just sat there getting more and more bulgy and looking more and more surprised at herself. Then one morning when I carried Ezekiel out to the chicken yard, I looked in the hen house to see how this hen was getting along, and my gosh, there was the biggest egg I'd ever seen. It was so big it took up about the whole nest, and there was the hen teetering on the edge of the box with her head tilted to one side, looking at that egg as if she couldn't figure out what it was. I touched it. It was kind of leathery shell, more like a turtle egg, and it was sort of longish shape and big as mushmelon, and even bigger, maybe. I ran back to the house and yelled out that our hen had just laid the biggest egg in the world. And hurry up and look at it before it explodes or something. We all tore out to the hen house, and I was afraid the egg would be gone, but there it was. And the hen was sitting on top of it, doing her best to cover it. She looked kind of puzzled, as if this wasn't quite what she had expected, but she was going to make the best of it anyway. I sort of admired her for that. Pop thought it was some kind of trick at first, and he looked at me out of the corner of his eye. But when we lifted the egg, hen off the egg and looked at it, looked it over carefully, they all agreed it was a real egg. But a queer one, which means kind of different. Pop scratched his head and looked at the chicken, and then at the egg, and then back to the chicken again. It doesn't seem possible, he said. The egg's almost as big as she is. How could she do it? But what will we do with it, my sister asked. We could all have it for breakfast, Pop suggested. How many minutes would you boil an egg that size? We will not have it for breakfast, Mom said. I won't have that thing in my kitchen. It looks like a snake's egg to me. Some snake, Pop said. But I asked why not keep it and let the hen sit on it till it's hatched. Then we would see what would come out of it. Nothing good, I'm certain of that. It would probably be something horrible. But just remember, if it's a crocodile or a dragon or something like that, I won't have it in my house for one minute. Very well, Mr. Twitchell, Pop said, winking at me. We'll promise not to bring any dragons into the house. He lifted the hen back on top of the enormous egg, and she slipped around and fluttered her wings, trying to get her balance up there. We all went to the house for breakfast. Pop said that the egg would give him something besides local gossip to put in the newspaper for a change. Cynthia wasn't as excited about the big egg as I was, for she would have been... But she would have been if she known what was going to hatch out of it. So there is the end of chapter one. Very excited. What do you think is going to hatch out of that egg? Well, we'll get to chapter two next time. Talk to you later. Bye.